Hey Jared, uh, congrats on the on the mini book. I guess. Hey man, that's what. Hey, listen, I haven't done media in a while, man. You do a book, and now they got me doing media requests. It's, it's, it's insane. Uh, no, but I've been enjoying it. Congrats. But I appreciate I'm it. You know, in, in the bubble, there was a snitch line. I'm just wondering, like, what was the what was the snitch line that was in the bubble? On, on things, the value of pulling back the curtain on what was obviously a very uh, tumultuous year, and then um, things that stay in house, maybe don't make. Well, I would say first thing first when you when you when you deal with snitching, it's usually someone doing a car a crime of you know inside information when you're trying to get for one. This is a basketball. This was an opportunity I didn't even seek. Amazon came to me with it to be honest with you. So, and I just think it was a unique, rare experience in my life. And, and, and life in general for us where you had the riot, you, you basically, you know, the riots when it came to the, the protests, when it came to coronavirus, Kobe's death, China, it was so much that went in and who better to tell that story than myself who was with it all, as close as my relationship is with LeBron and AD, to be a player in that bubble, to have my son in that bubble, to, I just think that's something that people are going to look back on. And for me, it's, if you, if once you listen to it, I hope everyone does. You, it's 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 broad. I mean, I talk about my t my time with my son in there. That was a huge thing for me of having, you know, those what two months with my son one on one. My wife wasn't even there to be able to, you know, uh, you know, do, for school work with the, him coming to practices, a father son relationship. And then so for me, it's, it's a, the fine line is is if it's personal stuff that you think someone wouldn't want to say when it comes to a teammate, when it comes to all, all this other stuff like. The President Obama quote, I think it's just good intake. I mean, people love this. I mean, we're entertainers, we're that. And so there's a there's there's a line, maybe sometimes I cross it. That's life. Okay, David Benjamin, please. Jared, uh got through the book yesterday. Good job and congrats. Thank you. The um the part about the Clippers and uh I just wanted to to see how you and the team use them this year. Uh, you, you said last year that, hey, Kawhi was coming off the championship, so you know, he's defending the title, so he wants to have a certain viewpoint. We're okay with that. Patrick Beverly, him talking is part of the way he sees his family. That's kind of his brand in the NBA. But, but Paul George, um, you guys took exception. That's the way well, looking. I yeah. think, yeah, no, for sure, no. When it, when it comes to this, for one, Trash talking and talking is a part of basketball. Anyone can do it. Paul George, Kawhi, this. Sometimes you might say this person can, is allowed to talk more than that person, but all it, what it comes down to it is players look for motivation. We look for different things. The Lakers, I play on the Clippers, so I know the difference of how we perceive them, they perceived us, the rivalry, the inside, the Lakers getting all the media attention, Clippers don't. And at this time, this is when Kawhi could have came to the Lakers. And he chose the Clippers and had his thing and does the commercial with the crown. So right there, that's true. That's a with him not saying anything. That's already a shot right there. The new Kings of L.A., which is fine, which I actually like in basketball when it comes to certain stuff of, of, of adding to the rivalry. Um, Pat Bev does it. And there's nothing wrong with Paul George says. It's just, listen, I mean, where, where them, it's their city, their team. It's a little bit different. Braun's been here. Braun's a champion. Uh, if, I, if I could follow up. Yeah. Um, because you guys are playing the team that, that beat them uh, in the West Conference Finals tomorrow. <clears throat> How do you view the Clippers this year? I think that you can tell they have a, a sense of focus, a sense of determination. Uh, Paul George and Kawhi are playing at high, high levels. And I just think that they have a chance. I mean, listen, the Clippers, uh, if you didn't ask me who we were going to play, I, we were, I, I thought we were going to play the Clippers to go to the finals. I, I expected them to be there. I expect them to be there this year. They have the talent. They have the all-star. They have great coaching and stuff like that. And I think this is all, it's all part of basketball. I think the league needs it. The league needs us to play the Clippers. I think the league needs us to play Brooklyn. And I'm all for uh, you guys doing your job and having the stars play each other. And so we view them highly. And so we all look for motivation. And 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 for when it when it comes to certain people, what they say, there's a reason why Braun and AD don't say anything when it comes to other teams and what they're going to do. They just go out there and do it. That's their personality. You know, I like to talk. Pat Bev likes to talk. People have their own different personalities, and we you take certain things and you put it in the back and you remember what people said. Okay, Kyle, do 
Hey, Jared. How it's we doing? Time no see. Yes, yeah. sir. Yeah, this is the open locker room season. I um, know. Uh, I actually have a non foot question. Um, you know, the, the last two games, the rotations changed, and, and Wes and Marquise, two experienced vets, have, have not played. And, you know, Frank has told us it's not permanent, but those guys will get in games. But what's it been like from your role as a guy who – pride himself in, in trying to kind of keep the locker room together and keep guys with their heads on straight to, to kind of talk to those vets about uh, getting DMPs the last few games. I mean, listen, they're, they're a pro, so they know. I mean, we definitely have had conversations. We've talked that. I mean, Taylor Thornton Tucker's earned it. Let's just be honest. We all see it when, when he's play, his play out there, his, his driving ability, defensively what he's done. Uh, the only thing that was in the, in – Retro holding him back was his age, right? Was his experience and something that you can only get better through playing. I think that Wes and Markeith, and I'm not just saying that, we're going to need them to win a championship. We're going to need them when it's time to guard Kevin Durant, Kawhi. Wes has to play. There's going to be times when we went size, and as you saw with Keith, when it was small ball, we played Houston and we played Miami. He was crucial. He shot 40% in the playoffs and we won a championship. So for this is – we got to stay ready. Once my calf gets better, uh, they were just playing pickup. Like, I'll be in the games with them. Like, simulating games of, hey, keeping them sharp, staying letters, uh, you know, when it comes to back-to-backs, when it comes to COVID, when it comes to other people not playing well, hey, we need to get Keith in. If it's a, a guy, you know, we're holding a guy back a game so Keith can play 20 minutes. Man, it's 72 games. We play every other day. They've been professional. They've handled it the right way. And you expect, any, you, you expect nothing less. That's how it should be on a championship team. And, and as a quick follow-up, how is the captain and what are you expecting from that? I've had a couple minor, minor, minor setbacks. It's called old age at 35 where I've played a little three-on-three, four-on-four, felt good, done some, did some sprints afterwards, tightened up a little bit. Today I came in pain-free. Um, so if you, want, if you want to give you a date, I don't really do dates, but I would say, man, maybe a week. I'm trying to, you know, now I'm trying to slowly build back up. And let's just be honest, man, we can't even practice. This is our first practice in, what, two and a half, three weeks? Like, so the only thing I'm doing is calf raises and, uh, and, and ellipticals and, you know, running. So it's been slower than expected, and it's what happens. You get a little bit older. But the good thing about it, they don't need me. Okay. Dan, Dan, please. Here, we most definitely need you. Yes. <laughs> um, congratulations on – Writing a book and taking another media job away from us. Um, how dare you? I, I'm now an author. Yeah, how dare you? Um, being around LeBron for this last year plus, and knowing how regimented he is about his body and stuff like that, how did you think he would handle the short 71 days um, off season? And how do you think it's possible that here we are talking about a player who might be playing some of the best basketball ever? At this late in his career. I never got the motion of like, hey, he he was going to struggle. The thing about LeBron is it was just, you know, if anything, when he has a long layoff, having to ramp it back up. So obviously we won the championship in the short layoff. I just thought that if anything, in the middle of the season, he might need a game or two here just to recharge. But I mean, when you start off the games playing the Clippers and we're getting in there, like, LeBron, like D. Wade just said the other day, it's probably the best LeBron in the sense of him being smart, his jump shot. You know, we just we just joked about it the other day. Like he's shooting career highs of shooting and is confident. He, I think it's the most attempts from three. So um, I never I never thought it, the the short turnaround would hurt him necessarily. I just thought that there'll be a time in the middle late the season where. Hopefully, you know, we're, uh, you know, a number one, number two seed to be able to give them some games here before the playoffs, man. So there's no fans here. We, we know it's a marathon. You know, people get, you know, we just lost to Detroit. It was like, you know, like a Super Bowl for them and how it is, how they come at you. And, and we have to be prepared for that through a long season. But when it gets to the playoffs and we have LeBron and he's rested and AD's rested, it's going to be hard to beat us four out of seven. Is he the best player in the league still? Yes, yes. And 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 that means, and I'm saying that he might not be playing statistically the best because of how it is. You got to think about this. I mean, LeBron's so smart. He knows I got to take care of AD. I got to make sure Montrezl Harrell's doing well. Got, got to make sure, you know, Dennis is engaged. I got, how do I get Koo some shots? We're doing a lot of different stuff. So that's going to take away some of his numbers necessarily. You know, statistic wise. But doing that, that's why I know MVP just goes by numbers plus minus. It's like, okay, 
That's why him being number one in the West last year, taking a leader, having AD come on, new head coach. It's a lot of varies. That's why you say, hey, who's the most valuable to this team? There's no one more valuable than Braun. Now, if people like, let's be real, Durant playing phenomenal. Kyrie out of his mind. Even Kawhi and Paul George. But what LeBron does on a day-to-day -day basis, man, it's, it's unmatched. Because I know because I talk to players on their team. I could tell. I could tell you. I, 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 there's no one who talks to more players than me. So I know. I want to know what certain players are doing and how are they as a, a teammate, how are they as a leader. And, and I've heard from all of them. Can we show the last couple of questions? Um, Jeff, we're going to go with uh, Brad Turner, please. Who? Brad Oh, okay. Turner. Brad Turner. Man, this book, is this a fiction? It's a real account. Huh? Is this fiction or is it real? This is real. This is, this is, oh, this, this is real as it gets. Right. Before you stole Dan's job by becoming Harper, did you discuss the book with LeBron, AD, or, or any of your teammates? I did not. I did not. As a matter of fact, AD today when I was in the training room said, hey, tell, tell everyone to stop tagging me about your book. Uh, no, I mean, listen, before I came to the Lakers, everyone knew the stuff I did with the media, you know, off-season TV, how I am. LeBron has mentioned it before, how good I am with the media. That's, that's part of my job. I mean, let's be honest. Here. I've been here a year and a half, two years, and you've heard no drama when it comes to the Lakers of what's going on, is coach on hot seat, this and that, players' arguments. You haven't heard that, right? You just haven't heard that. And that, that's one of my jobs. Is for one, I am in the media. I'm, t I'm brutally honest when it comes to what's going on and who's playing well, who's not, who we have to get going. And so for this, it's uh, they understand that. And everything in there, I think you, they'd want people to know. People want to know about LeBron's regimen. I don't give them inside. They want to know about the, 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 the chamber he sleeps in at night, nighttime. Where, where can I get one at? How much does it cost? Like, those are cool stuff inside. Or how, how is AD as a leader? What, he, what he's been doing? And, you know, we're also human beings. Us having a Madden tournament. Them talking to Obama. The protests. Police brutality and how we thought about that. People want that information because they want it, we want this to stop. We want this to be a better nation, a better world. So their their opinions, their views are are huge for that. And so uh, they haven't. Uh, hopefully they hopefully they listen to it and hopefully they they, they you know we, we talk about it one day. Okay, Melissa Rowland, please. Hey Jared, you're a guy who obviously prides himself on you know your leadership. And you've been in the league for a long time, and seeing a lot of different guys and the way they approach it. What strikes you the most about the way LeBron James leads his team? And is he the kind of guy who like tailors the way he leads, like depending on which guy he's talking to and kind of like adjusts for sure. the personalities? Like what strikes you the most about him as a leader? I didn't know playing with him, he was this hands-on with everybody. Like he literally has a unique relationship. I've been with Steve Nash, uh, Grant Hill, Chris Paul, Shaq, and some are loud, some are quiet, some lead in the just by example of how they are as a person. Uh, you know, we used to call Grant Hill Obama, just did everything the right way. Well, LeBron's very unique where he's a he's a guy's guy. He'll drink some wine with you. He'll he'll, you know, have a one-on-one -on -one talk with you. And, you know, you guys have looked up to him for a long time. So his words of encouragement, he knows what to say at the right time. And he knows when to get on you. Let's be real. Like when you, you see LeBron's body language, he doesn't hide when he's frustrated or mad. And you know that. And in a way is you want to play well for him, play well for yourself, because you know how hard he puts in to his craft. You see what he does and you don't want to let him, yourself and the Lakers down. So uh, I didn't know that he was like that when I first, I, you, you can just see it on the buses, talking to certain people on the plane. Hey, when someone's struggling, hey, us three, we're going to sit down and have dinner together. We're going we're gonna to work this out. Like it's just, it's, it's very rare, man. I've been, I, I haven't seen it. I've seen it with certain guys, but everyone could tell you they've had a, a, a personal talk with LeBron at certain times, both positive or negative, about what we need to do and what he needs to do for you, vice versa. Hey, Jared, if we can just do, thank you. If we can just do one last question. Oh, Harrison's been waiting to ask a question, so we'll get him in. And okay. Thank you. Hey, uh, thanks, Jared. And excuse the construction outside. They decided to start right when I got called on. But, um, you know, one of the things I think all of us uh, love about you is you're always candid. So I just want to preface this. So this is not my opinion. But since I wrote about your comments about the Clippers and Paul George, and I know you talked a little bit about the trash talk today, 
um, you know, already. But I was just curious, like, my mentions have been filled, basically, with people saying, like, why does this guy get to talk trash then? And, like, when he's saying the people aren't good enough. So, like, well, I, mean, I guess what I'm trying to get at is I'm curious, like, what, what would you say to people who say that you're not good enough or you're not in a standing, like, in the NBA where you should be able to say this stuff? About well, it? well, for one, I mean, you can say whatever you want, any person. You're allowed to. This is a good thing about the country we live in and trash talking. So I don't know if you were on here earlier. There's nothing wrong with anyone say. Paul George, Kawhi Leonard, T. Lou. T. Lou is my guy. Anyone can say anything. It's what we use as motivation. And sometimes if you ever remember Michael Jordan, all the certain stuff that he used as motivation for it, it wasn't like they were wrong. It's what I view. I could view, you know, uh, you know, with certain Russell Westbrook views sometimes when he does the media, it, it being a stupid question. It doesn't mean it's a stupid question. It's what, how he views it at that time. So how we view it is that the, the Clippers, you know, at that time were trying to take over L.A. We know Lakers will always be. It's always be, I mean, Lakers will be LA. That's what it is. It's, it'll always be a city. The, the Clippers could win 10 championships in a row. It would still be. It's the history. It's how it is. I know because I'm from San Diego. And it used to be San Diego Clippers, to be honest with you. So giving me the right, I don't know. I don't know gives me the right. 14 years, 900 games, play with over 25 Hall of Famers, uh, future co head coach, future GM. I think I've, I put a little bit of work in where I could talk about it. Doesn't mean what I say is right. This, I missed what I, my comments was more about how we viewed in motivation. Paul George is a hell of a player, MVP candidate. Nothing thing that what he said wasn't wrong, but the difference is, is it's a little bit different. It's a difference of how you see how someone like LeBron AD, them not saying anything. Them saying, you know what? We'll find out who, who the king of LA is on the court. And last year we found out.